If there's any question whether or not Tyron Matthew still has it, there shouldn't be. He absolutely still has it and is going to bring so much to this New Orleans team. So like first, let's start off with something like this. This is a great example of what Matthew brings to the table. He's, you know, I really think that when it comes to safeties, the main thing I want, not the main thing, but one of the key things I want is just having a high IQ player at the safety position. And that's what Matthew is. He's just a smart guy. He just, he reads the plays so well and this is just a perfect example of his instincts that he has where it's going to be quarters coverage and you see I've circled him and you see the zone that he's supposed to cover right that's where he's covering and typically when you're the safety in this area where's your main attention going to be it's going to be to the offenses left but a couple things to note is that on that side of the field, there's a fullback who's one of the eligible receivers there. So Matthew's maybe not going to pay him the attention that other guys might get. Look at how right when this play begins, Matthew, again, he could try to, you know, bolt in and try to take away the uh, fullback. Well, a couple things. A, there's other Kansas City players who can do that. He understands his defense. He's going to trust his teammates here, which is the correct decision. And B, he sees where Lamar Jackson is looking. Right there is where Jackson is looking over towards, and you have a wide receiver on a linebacker right here. So this is a bit dangerous for Kansas City, and I think that you could say, well, he's running into double coverage. That's true, but he's running into double coverage with a linebacker trailing him, and he can cut over the middle to where a safety might have a hard time, you know, the other safety might have a hard time running in and knocking it away. However, Matthew reads it, gets back, gets to the spot, first and gets the interception right there and that's just one of the things that he can do is he, he understands the rules of the defense and just you know again and he's played in several different defenses now but whatever defense he's in he can understand the rules at a high effectiveness and he can make those big splash plays this is how you can you know get that big impact value in a lot of ways i think people kind of view safeties as not the most important of positions but when you can get these splash plays that's how you can really add a ton of value and that's what Matthew you can do is get those big plays and i also want to talk about something like this because you have seen matthew get burned before we've all seen it happen but there's also kind of a reason for it so something like this it's going to be man coverage uh you have a single safety deep and you see the route over the middle well this is tyron matthew who's going to be covering this route and a lot of teams do this differently it's not actually not that common for someone like Tyron Matthew to be going up against wide receivers. Typically, you don't want a safety against a wide receiver if you can avoid it. This is uh, Sammy Watkins who he's going up against. And, you know, typically you'll find someone else to try and uh, make this work, right? And typically, you have a third corner covering that guy, and then your safety either covers a halfback or a linebacker. However, for the Chiefs, they trust Matthew in those roles, and he does a good job, but he doesn't always do a perfect job, like what you're going to see here. I mean, look, as you see, he's going to end up grabbing on right there and getting called for a penalty. So a lot of people will say, oh, you know, he commits too many penalties. He grabs too much. Like, well, A, uh, the numbers don't really back that up. He, he's usually good for like three or four penalties a year, but it's not like egregiously bad. Uh, and also B, part of why that happens is because he just is asked to do a lot more than your average safety does because the Chiefs like to have these cornerback blitzes and defensive back blitzes. That typically means a safety has to pick up a receiver. And when that happens, then, you know, that means that he can sometimes be out of his element a little bit and it can occasionally result in a flag. But I think he does a pretty good job of it. Like here, this play is going to be a good example of another thing that he brings to the table really well. I think in a big way where he is going to be playing man coverage against a tight endo. So, you know, this is the matchup that you expect uh, a safety to be able to at least handle somewhat. But what I like about Matthew is, again, he just he scans the field. He's always aware. Look at how right when this play begins, you see Carr take the snap. And right here, I mean, for one thing, so Matthew knows he has safety help over the top. So if Carr does bomb this deep, the safety is going to go over and it that's not really open. So maybe you could say, oh, look, uh, the leverage kind of deep, that could be concerning. It actually isn't. This is the coverage you want to play if you're Matthew. Matthew takes this opportunity to look back and see what else is going on. And because of that, when Carr throws it over to Renfro, Matthew's in position, and he's going to be the one who actually recovers this fumble right here. That was a catch and a fumble, and Matthew recovered. And that's just awareness is what it is. So that's a big thing of football is just, especially at the safety position, is being aware of your surroundings. Now, listen, 
Is it totally lucky that the ball happened to get knocked out there and, you know, the, you know, Foster Moreau wasn't able to pick it up cleanly, so then he got the forced fumble, or excuse me, the fumble recovery? Of course, that was definitely luck-based. That's why no one really looks at fumble recoveries as a great measurement of who's good and who isn't. But the fact that Matthew has a history of putting himself in position to get this kind of stuff is what I look for, more of a, a process type thing than a result type thing. And his process there of being able to make these reads is very good. We also have something like this, where what we're going to see here is this is going to be man coverage once again. And you see the way this concept works. You have the receiver closest towards the bottom of the screen. It's almost like a rub route pick play type thing. Not quite, but kind of a similar idea. He's going to run over the middle, can create some traffic, as then you have your tight end who you're sending out towards the sideline. And basically, you know, the idea is, hey, uh, let's try to take advantage of a matchup going up against a safety here. The issue is that Matthew is no ordinary safety. Uh, also worth noting, this is the third down, and they have to get to the 35-yard line. So you're only trying to get a few yards. It's not going to be a play where you'll get a ton, but you'll get some. However, watch how Matthew doesn't let them. I mean, look at this. He's going to make a great break, and it's a great tackle, which does not allow him to pick up the first down there. I mean, that was just a really good play by Matthew, and that's what he can do consistently. I think Matthew's a very good player, and I think that the tape backs it up. He's someone who can make a tackle if he has to. He's really good in coverage and has a tendency for the splash plays, which is the main thing you want in a safety, I think, at the end of the day. Give me someone who can, you know, make those splash plays uh, at his position, which he absolutely can do. So, yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on Matthew as a whole. For one thing, I feel like his, his personality just fits the Saints, right? He feels like a Saint. Uh, one interesting thing I thought of uh, just with this fit is just, you know, obviously Matthew and Brady got into it during their Super Bowl. Uh, now uh, they are going to be playing each other twice a year. So that's fun. Yet another player on the New Orleans Saints who does not like a player on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, you know, two, two teams that definitely... Uh, aren't big fans of each other, it seems. And, you know, uh, it makes sense. They've been standing in each other's way these past couple of years. Um, you know, I just think Matthew's such a talented player, and it's a great scheme fit. You do not have to worry about, because, you know, every time a player goes to a new scheme or a new team, the question is, well, how does he fit in with the scheme? It's basically the same scheme uh, he was in in Kansas City. So I don't think you have to worry too much about that. He should immediately be able to have success there. Uh, and an interesting move of Matthew of waiting until he got, uh, you know, contract. Or maybe a team didn't really offer him a great contract until now due to his age. But he's only 29 years old. So part of me wonders if he was just waiting for the right deal and for the right scheme fit and all of that stuff. So the idea that he's like, oh, well, he's on his fourth team now. Yeah, but he's played good on three teams. So, like, I'm not concerned about that in the slightest. I think that's silly. Uh, he's an incredible player. One of the real underrated players in the league, I think. Listen, not the biggest guy, right? That's what we always know about Matthew. It's kind of always been, you know, 5'9", uh, 174, but who cares? Like, he plays big, whatever. Uh, he's a great player. Like, that's just kind of how I view it, uh, especially for safeties. It all comes down to, uh, you know, are you someone who can play well and he can play well? You know, put yourself in good positions. That's what he does. Uh, and it'll absolutely work out well in New Orleans. He should be a joy to watch. It's a fantastic fit. Uh, don't know the actual details of the contract yet. Uh, apparently, the contract isn't actually official yet, but it's expected to be official. So uh, we'll see exactly how it works out. But interesting stuff, uh, I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.